coming up on this episode of The Prodigal Life. And it's really very similar to public displays of affection, even, you know, f uh, filial, uh, friend friendly uh, yeah. affection. Um, but even romantically, like some cultures are, are more okay with like the men and women, uh, husband and wife might be more affectionate with each other in some cultures than in other cultures, more stoic cultures, right? And, right. and so I think that we, we, I don't want to be overly critical of, of people that are wrestling with displaying faith because there's such a huge cultural component to it that mm. makes it easier or not easier mm. to do that. I pray it when I'm in the car. If I have somebody with me, I really don't mind. Um, and I pray it. And, you know, a lot of people go, what's the rosary about? And I'm like, it's basically, in a very abbreviated form, it is the life of Jesus, walking the life of Jesus through the eyes of his mom. Are you away from your faith? Do you wonder why you're Catholic? Do you really want to know more? If God is so good and he made a beautiful and amazing world, then why does life feel so messy and difficult and painful sometimes? Do you feel stuck and want to take your faith to that next level? Join us on The Prodigal Life as me and Ellen and Nick have an honest and open discussion about all things important in our faith life. Welcome, Welcome to, to The, the Prodigal, Prodigal Life. life. And thank you for joining us today. And we just want to remind you before we start our stimulating discussion <laughs> <laughs> on this episode uh, of our website, prodigallife.com. On there, you will find previous uh, episodes of all the shows. You'll find uh, uh, information about the, the three of us and the work we're doing in the Lord's Vineyard, as well as some merch and some other fun things there. You can also patronize us as well. Uh, in a good way. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you go to the Light Bearers, We Will Serve, and you can join a different patron level that will uh, help us continue to to bring uh, these quality podcasts to you and to hopefully um, you've been listening long enough now that you're encouraged and, and growing deeper in your faith and your love for Christ and, and for the church. And so we need your help to continue to do that. So we hope you consider uh, becoming a patron. And you also need to get the app. We have a really great app on your desktop, laptop, or tablet. You can go to theawakenapp.io. I don't know what IO means, but just do it. Because <laughs> I know about .coms, but I don't know about .io. Anyway, or you can go to your Apple Store or your Google Store and download the Awaken Catholic app. It's got a beautiful sun. You can't miss it. There's a lot of other Awaken crap, but just go to the one that has the sun on it. <laughs> now, the good thing about the Awaken Catholic app is it's 100% Catholic. It has a messaging app so you can protect your family and your and have safe communication. It also has links to wonderful podcasts where they discuss a variety of Catholic topics. Uh, there's music and then there's a really great page where you can download um, different prayers. And we're going to start uploading more prayers for you, especially the ones that we keep mentioning throughout the different podcasts. So we're going to help you enrich your life and we hope that you stay tuned. Oh, they will. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking about here, Ellen? We, oh, here we go. We're going to talk about public displays of faith. And that's a really big topic because most people are very comfortable praying and being Catholic when they're either with their church group or with people that they know are of like mind. Mm. But what does your Catholic life faith like look like when you're like at work mm -hmm. or the grocery store or the mall? Or in your car. And if you have a job where you have other people in your car, like if you're an Uber driver or, you know what I mean, anything like that, do you display your faith? You know, I mean, do you pray in public? Do you bless your food? If you're out to eat, yeah, sure, maybe you say grace when you're at home because you're at home. But when you're sitting at a restaurant with a thousand other people, do you stop what you're doing and everyone bow their head and bless yourself? Or do you own your faith? That's what we're talking about today. Yeah, you know, what's funny is at the, in the uh, the opening of the show, you made a you know a funny comment about that it's we're not talking about public displays of affection. We're talking mm -hmm. about public. Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny to me or interesting is I I kind of they're in similar uh, categories in mm -hmm. my mind because as a Cuban um, and I you know I was born in Miami, Florida, um, and we relocated here when I was a little older. I was a kid though, and uh, there were. Th certain practices I was used to doing as a Latino in that culture in Miami, where even, you know, whether you're greeting men or women, you kiss you kiss each other on the cheek and you give each other a hug and whatever. Mm -hmm. And like adjusting to that and like not 
kissing the men that I'm greeting. Like, it's, it's real weird. It, even even adjusting, like, when I go down to visit and then I come back here and I'm not kissing men on the cheek, I'm just like, oh, yeah, uh, I don't want to look weird. Um, and, and I think that there's a, a big part of this is cultural, right? So, like, if you're in a parish, for example, that is, like, very accustomed to praying over each other, Bible studies, talking right. about the name of the Lord, you know, like, mentioning the name of the Lord uh, with ease without feeling weird about it, um, culturally, if that if that culture is there, then you have more permission in a sense. You know, you you feel more right. permission to do the same thing, and it's really very similar to public displays of affection, even you know, f uh, filial, uh, friend friendly uh, right. affection. Um, but even romantically, like some cultures are are more okay with like the men and women, uh, husband and wife might be more affectionate with each other in some cultures than in other cultures, more stoic cultures. Right. And, right. and so I think that we, we, I don't want to be overly critical of, of people that are wrestling with displaying faith because there's such a huge cultural component to it that yeah. makes it easier or not easier mm -hmm. to do that. And then like separate from all of that, there's the dynamic of in the world we're in and the political climate we're in, where being a Catholic in so many ways is, you know, anathema. It's like, like we are not allowed to be Catholic nowadays. Like we're, we're really looked down upon. And so on top of the cultural comfort mm. of displaying and being vulnerable, our feelings, our faith, there's this added component of like persecution almost Correct. where certain people are just going to be real triggered just by the notion that you are Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just some vom vomiting some thoughts there. All right. So what do you mm. think, Deacon? Yeah. So, no, I, I totally agree. Um, but we cannot be afraid, mm -hmm. right, right. To, to show. I mean, you see, uh, we talked about this in, in a previous episode. You have our Muslim brothers and sisters who walk around proudly displaying their, their signs of their faith. Mm -hmm. If they're a man, they wear the kufi. If they're a woman, uh, they wear the uh, hijab, which is the veil. Or they, if they're serious, they wear the burqa, which is, you know, the black, what I call the blackout. You can see everything except for their eyes. I mean, the whole thing top. I mean, literally, you can't even see their toes. Yeah. All you can see is their eyes, the burqa. I mean, Buddhists wear their stuff. Hindus wear their stuff. I see Sikhs mm -hmm. that wear the turbans. Right. Even going, even I've even seen some TSA agents who are Sikh and who wear the turbans. And yeah, and, it's, and they allow them. They allow them because those are signs of their faith. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you have to understand that. Okay, if they're going to allow that, mm -hmm. then they need to allow you as a Christian to share your faith. Right. Um, it, got, you know, it got real twisted out of nowhere. It, it did. It wasn't I, always I, like this. Well, and, and here, here's mm -hmm. what I, I've been thinking about this. You know, uh, I, I'm noticing during. COVID, I've been watching a little more TV than I normally watch, which is usually none. <laughs> but when I see these shows, you know, very, and I think it's a, a, a very interesting little connection here. When, when, they, when they curse God, right? They say, Jesus Christ, God damn. Da -da. You never hear Buddha damn. You never hear Confucius. You never hear Muhammad Akbar when they're, when they're cursing something. Right. It's always Jesus. Can you imagine cursing Muhammad, the backlash uh, you would get? Yeah, but but it's okay to curse Jesus? That's what I'm and saying. every television show, every movie <laughs> on the plane all, yeah. that I watch, it's always Jesus. Yeah. It's never because they know who God is. The devil knows who God is. Yep. I mean, and that's why we get persecuted to this very day. That's why the Muslims get away wearing their stuff at work. Uh, we put out. A crucifix on, oh, you can't do that. Or if you try Ten to wear... Ten Commandments. How about the Ten Commandments? We can't even have the Ten Commandments out. Yes, and so in some courthouses or some public schools? places now, schools, can't have the Ten Commandments, you know, um, but they could display, you could teach the Quran, you could teach other things like that. Right. You know, um, like I said, I, you know, wearing my crucifix and stuff, like, anybody going to tell me to take it off? I said, you, gonna, you know, I ain't, I ain't taking nothing off. What Your Keep move, mm -hmm. your move... Right? You know, I'm not gonna take this off for you because you're uncomfortable. Just don't, like I said, don't lay on the plane. It. Don't look. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm. Uh, but so, I mean, why? Because for me, um, I, I again, I think back to the martyrs. These people died rather than deny Jesus. Correct. So why should I be embarrassed or ashamed of reflecting who I am, especially as a cleric? I mean, if I could wear clerics, I wear clerics all the time, but I can't. So I, I wear an outward display. My, and again, it does raise some questions. And most of the time, it's actually positive, positive. Mm. not negative. Some conversations. What? What's? I understand the cross. What's that thing behind it? Oh, it's a miraculous medal. 
Mm-hmm. Miraculous, no, what is that? And see, an opportunity for conversation, That's right? right? An opportunity for maybe evangelization, mm-hmm. you know? So someone that had maybe a misconception can now be, now we're having a conversation right. about yeah. what, is, and, and that's beautiful because that's bringing, that's helping to bring people together. Mm-hmm. And it would never have happened had not you been showing a, a public display of the faith. More people comment on my ring from every walk of life, every age group, every culture, they always ask me. Some will know what it is, and they'll say, man, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Other people don't know what it is, but then I explain it to them. And they're like, oh, They think it's wow. a weapon, don't they? Some people think like it's, it's a weapon. Think it's a... And I tell them it is. I think it is really funny. Because it funny. stopped a war. And they look at okay. me like, what? Yeah, that's good. They're like, what? I think I'm it's... like, yeah, this, this here, stopped in war. We beat the Muslims. Battle of Lepato. Look it up. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so, um, and they always stop and they're like, what do you mean? It, it, you know, it, it, it saved, you know, stopped a war. And I'm like, oh, well, we defeated the Muslims with this. Um, so, and I wear my St. Benedict medal and I always wear my scapula. So a lot of people don't know what a scapula is, but, you know, mine. And I have my brown scapula and then inside of it, I have a green scapula. And then you were talking about your miraculous medal. And inside the other side of mine is my miraculous medal. So mm-hmm. I, you know what I mean? Because I bought this real, and this is a really cool um, scapula because it's made with the military grade and oh, it's nice. sewn all the way into it. Now, I had so many break, I was just done. So yeah. I was like, that's I want the one, I, I want the <laughs> yeah, one that's yeah. never going to break. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that's what that yeah. is. So do you want to share a little bit about what this yeah, is? Yeah. So what can? all these things are that we're displaying here are sacramentals. Correct. Right. So we know that sacraments are sensible signs instituted by Christ. That confer grace, right? So we know what the seven sacraments are. But there are these other things like sacramentals. For example, you walk into the church mm-hmm. and you dip your fingers in a holy water for the sign of the cross. That's a sacramental. Mm-hmm. You know, the crucifix, miraculous smell that I'm wearing, that's a sacramental. Mm-hmm. You know, the, all the things that Ellen are displaying here, it's like a, a almost like a, a Catholic jewelry store on her body here. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are sacramentals. Mm-hmm. So again, we talked about this in a previous episode. They're not they're not good luck charms. No. You know, they're 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 not um things that we uh you know that we we touch them. Oh, I'm gonna be saved now because I touched my yeah, no. crucifix or whatever. I mean, to, to me, they're uh, uh, when you feel them against your body, they're physical reminders of our faith in Christ. Yeah, and they're a beautiful you know? way to connect with your faith. Yeah, and exactly. That's, that's, that's what we, I why, use we have bodies. We have to, we we we're, we have to our who we are is is shown forth through our bodies, mm-hmm. right? It reflects the person, mm-hmm. and so we have physical like wearing a wedding ring, right? Because this this means something, mm-hmm. right? right? And so we have these physical tangible things as human beings that connect us to deeper realities. Mm-hmm. So we see a nun wearing a habit. Right. Okay. That's her wedding dress. That, that outward sign speaks to a deeper inner reality. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with the sacramentals. And it's the same okay. thing with the beautiful statues that we have, because a lot of people have the misconception that we worship. You know what I mean? And they don't understand. And I'm like, it's no different than having a picture of your grandmother who passed away in your living room. You're just remembering. We never had the option. You know, I never had the opportunity to meet, you know, St. Teresa of Avila or, you know what I mean, St. John the Baptist or any of those people. So we have these beautiful statues that remind us of these tremendous saints and, and spiritual leaders in our faith. There are and that's family why members. We, they're our family. Yeah. Because um, we're all, I mean, we're all family technically because we all came from God. So we're all family. Um, but yeah, and, and a lot of people think that we worship Mary and we don't worship Mary. We honor her. And we love her and we respect her for what she did for us, you know, but the reason we pray, pray the rosary and a lot of people don't even understand why we do that. And I pray mine in public. I'll pray it in private. I'll yeah. pray it. I pray it when I'm in the car. If I have somebody with me, I really don't mind. Um, and I pray it. And, you know, a lot of people go, well, what's the rosary about? And I'm like, it's basically in a very abbreviated form. It is the life of Jesus walking the life of Jesus through the eyes of his mom. Mm. And that's what it is. You're taking a step-by-step life all the way through from literally the annunciation, the annunciation when the angel Gabriel came and, you know, asked her at 14 if she was okay with having the son of God. So there's that all the way through her coronation when she gets back up to be with her son when she um, falls asleep. And, um, but it goes through everything. I mean, you do all, all 20 of the mysteries and we consider them mysteries because they're they're beautiful and you meditate on them and it brings you closer to it um i just attended the rosary rally 
um, in Washington, D.C. Have you ever, uh, either one of you all, ever no. done a rosary yeah. rally? Highly recommend. Every year, it'll be next October, I believe. You go to the, we go to Washington, D.C., and we start at St. Peter's Church on Capitol Hill, and we do benediction, and then they bring the Eucharist. All we walk it down the streets while playing the rosary. And then we get down and then we have Euchar and we have Eucharistic adoration and then everybody prays in their speakers and it's beautiful. But literally we process through the streets praying for God and you know, praying for Jesus and praying the rosary um, to unite ourselves into, into a closer, more intimate relationship with Jesus through her mother, because she, you know, Jesus loves his mom and his mom loves him kind of like, I mean, not everybody has a perfect relationship with their mother, but Mary wants to have that relationship that you might not have ever had with you. You know what I mean? Because she, I mean, I look at what she did for her son. So yeah, we have a lot of really wonderful, wonderful traditions, mm -hmm. small and big. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I never really understood the difference between a big T tradition and a little T tradition. Could you rock and could you? Go yeah, we got an again? episode we're going to talk about that I actually know, too. But, but it's kind yeah, of a so, so, we'll give a T. Yeah, so these, these these things, these sacraments are also small T traditions because it's not part of the deposit of faith. Okay. So we talk about scripture and tradition as as those things that were handed on from Jesus to the apostles to us. Oh, okay. uh, and, th and those are things that um, like the creed and, and the, our belief statements and the sacraments. Uh, those are part of scripture and tradition, and those are guarded and protected by the magisterium or the teaching authority of the church. Okay. So small T traditions, for example, green in ordinary time, purple in Lent and Advent. I mean, those things can change. So those are small T traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and even, you know, quite frankly, praying the rosary and sacramentals mm -hmm. are small T traditions. Okay. Those things are not required for our belief you know so if we don't do any of those things we'll still get we can still get to heaven but it fortifies but they help us but yeah fortifies. but it helps yeah i mean I, we need all the help we can get mm -hmm. you know and that's why i love about the sacramentos because they're very tangible mm -hmm. you know even the blessing of your car or yeah that's the, what i was going to talk know, about do, do you all have your, like your house is blessed in mm -hmm. your cars and your offices mm -hmm. you know is that something you've had done nick oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. i mean it's efficacious to have to, to make you know ask your priest to come to your home mm -hmm. or your office or, you know, or bring your car over. It's, it's not a long process. It's just something, but it, 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 I think it's a reassuring. It's really nice to, it's basically saying, you know, gee, I trust you, Jesus, you know, you know, I want you to be with me in my everyday life and ride around in the car with me and, you know, be in my home and be in my office and be with me. I mean, that's how I see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're asking Christ to, again, through the sacramentals to be a part of your family experience a part of your home mm -hmm. so when you walk around the room sprinkling holy water you know if a priest or deacon comes and blesses your house that's awesome um you know this is also a wonderful tradition in the church you may have seen this and probably not exactly sure what it is mm -hmm. we have the year like you have 20 plus c plus m plus b plus and then at the year at the mm -hmm. end whatever right. whatever yeah, year it the, is the epiphany and blessing. Uh, the epiphany blessing right and uh, many people do that well what is where does that come from um, so Epiphany celebrates actually three things, ah, right? Okay. So Epiphany, uh, uh, it comes from uh, the, the uh, Greek word for manifestation of God. Okay. So the, the three Epiphanies would be um, the, the baptism of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Would be an Epiphany. Um, the, uh, what was it, the Epiphany event? Um, the wise men. The, yeah, so the wise men bringing Jesus, the, you know, the, 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 gifts. the, 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 the gifts. Um, and there's a third epiphany, is baptism, the uh, the three kings. And they're all right in that same area. But we, we say epiphany it could be any one of those three things. But all three of them are, 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 are epiphanies and manifestations of God. Um, I think the birth of Christ obviously would be yeah, I think epiphany and manifestation epiphany. of God yeah, too. And they all go together. So, so um, the CMB, because the, the, the tradition, those are the names of the three that came from the east, uh, Caspar, Melchior, and Baltazar. Mm. But when, but it's when it's used as a blessing, it's actually Latin: Christus Mansionem Benedicat. Christ blesses this house. Ah. But they use the C and B after the three names wise of men. the three wise so men. So that's why you bring chalk to your priest on Epiphany Sunday, so that they can bless bless the chalk, chalk and then you write and then you bless your house. About and your every doors. year you change you just change the year at the end. Uh, Have you ever that. done that? No, but I had heard of it one other time. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a guest on the Awakened Catholic show, 
and for the Catholic Weird Stuff segment, they talked about the chalk. Catholic Weird Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't know to, to bring your chalk um, on Yeah, so that's Sunday. something. It's not required or anything like that, but yeah. it's something, it's again, nice. just like holy water in your house, or mm-hmm. sometimes you have holy water fonts or crucifixes in your house. So when people walk in, it may not look like a, a shrine, but right. at least you can say, oh, these are people of faith. Mm-hmm. You know, so that says something. Right. You know, yeah. or when you walk into, you talk about Nick in a previous episode, how like some people walk to the house, they just get this feeling of just peace. peace. I mean, that's an atmosphere that you create, and sacramentals help us to do that as Catholics. That's true. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I think yeah. it's really important that we do that. So. What about, you said, um, you know, here's what I see at restaurants, which drives me insane. <laughs> So you have people sitting there, whether it's a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or families, what? and they're all sitting there test, texting. Oh, they're on their phones. They're, they're on their phone. I'm like, each other. no one's talking to you. You're sitting right across from each other. And you're probably texting you're in a restaurant person. and you're texting or looking playing. I'm like, can't you look at each other in the face and text? Or even families, you know, they're all on the phone. I'm like, what are you? What are you doing? Yeah, I know. It's you hard. know, and, and so they'll do that, and they think that that's okay. But if you start saying, name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, amen, you people look at you like got five heads or something mm-hmm. like that. So we're going to say grace now. We're going to say, whoa, hold on. You know, we should, again, we should not be embarrassed or ashamed of our faith. Mm-hmm. We've done that since day one, since we took our started going mm-hmm. to a restaurant with families. Where did grace come from? I mean, like saying grace before meals. Is that, I mean, I, is that just all the way from when Christ? That's well, probably Judaism. Did? Yeah, that I mean, comes, where did it? I mean, where did it? Do you have any idea where it? Well, it it, it, from? It, it it goes all the way back to Judah to the really? Old Testament. They, they would so say something like, yes. "Yeah, blessed are you." Yeah, betaka. Uh, they called the betaka or the blessing prayers. Okay. So bless, and we have them in our mass. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation. Well, King of I said the universe. we have a variation of yeah. the Beraka prayers. Beraka. Uh, although, if a Jewish person came to mass, they would recognize. Really? The blessed are you, Lord God, because you give us a breath offer, which is a variation of the Bedekah prayer, nice. which is called the blessing prayers. Okay. And so before they ate or before they, they, they did the blessing. Wow. And so, again, we carried all that. That's what I love about our Catholic faith. We have such a, a rich Jewishness to yeah. our faith. Yeah. yeah. And we just don't get rid of it. I mean, because well, we see it that fulfilled. All Catholics are ultimately Jewish. Yeah, we see a fulfillment of... <laughs> Of uh, of Judaism in Catholicism, right. so we don't throw everything out, you know. But mm-hmm. we see the fulfillment of it in Christianity. So there's some, yeah. and I just love the Jewishness of our faith. I yeah. really, really do. Well, somebody does a beautiful talk about that too. I can't remember who it is. There's a, a Catholic speaker that talks about the Jewish roots of oh yeah Catholicism. oh it's what's literally the book? Called the book? Jewish roots of the yeah. Eucharist. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, what it is. his name will, will probably come in for the end of the show. It's a wonderful book, and we'll try to remember what it is so we yeah, can put it up because it's, it's uh, really worth your time. Really good. Yeah, really good. In fact. I've seen him speak, and he wears a yarmulke. Yeah, when he's when he's speaking. It's the Jewish roots of our of our. I'm so Eucharist. annoyed that I can't think of his name uh, right uh, now. It'll, it'll it's one of those things. It'll come before. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, the end hopefully of the, before we finish, show, which so. is good. So now the another part of this is, you know, does it matter to you who you're with as to if you're comfortable or not displaying your faith? Because like, if you're out with people that are not of God. What does that look like? I mean, do you still do your stuff? You know what I mean? That you mm-hmm. would normally do. Or or do they ask you questions? You know what I mean? Or what what have you gotten for feedback, whether from strangers or from friends? You know what I mean? Or sometimes even family members. Because you and me have family members that are not of the same faith either. So for me, I think it's always important to do the sign of the cross at the beginning, at the end of your prayer, even if you're in front of other people. Mm-hmm. But whether or not I pray out loud versus internally... I I may, that may vary based on who I'm with or what environment I'm in. So I'm not going to, um, kind of an interesting tenet that I started to live by a while, uh, probably a handful of years ago is, you know, in my zeal for my excitement (laughs) of discovering the truth and the glory of Catholicism and God's plan for my life in it and God's plan for everyone's life in it. Um, I, I was definitely uh, heavy handed, you know, in, in my distribution of that truth to uh, my infliction of that truth to those around me. (laughs) And and I, I really, uh, in more recent past, you know, a handful of years now, I've come to this realization that, um, I really, I, I, for some things do not need to expect a non-believer to behave as though they are a believer because it would be inauthentic. Yeah. Now, okay. that's not the yeah. same thing as murder, abortion, you know, breaking the Ten Commandments, 
nobody should be breaking those commandments because by and large, whether you're Christian or not, they pretty much, other than, you know, worshiping God, you know, and not having other gods before you, whatever. That aside, you know, some of those things are just pretty solid principles to live by, even if you're totally secular. Um, But outside of that, like, I don't want to, um, I want my faith to be attractive enough to them that they want to participate in it, not something that I force down their throats if they're not already interested in it or whatever. So Mm -hmm. I will show them that I'm praying by making the sign of the cross and I will pray it without making a big show of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it's someone that I don't have a reason to think would, would not want to pray, I will invite them to pray with me. Mm. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. For me, if, I mean, if I don't uh, do those things that I'm not being true to myself, yeah. They're, they're not getting the real me, yeah. right. you know, so I have to be, and not just because I'm a deacon, but um, part of it is because I'm a deacon. I mean, and I think I have an obligation because um, uh, deacons are ministers of evangelization. Our job is to assist the bishop with his ministry of, of spreading the gospel. That's why even when the Pope says mass, a deacon reads the gospel. You ever notice that when a deacon's at mass, a priest That's never true. reads the gospel. It's always the deacon because that ties in directly with what our mission is. Um, to uh, spread the and, word. And, yeah, and to, to spread the word of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if I don't uh, pray, if I don't have the symbols, if I'm not praying the office on, or in the rosary on the plane, which I've done many, many, many times. Right. Um, and, and again, I don't do it. I, I, don't, I don't pray out loud to get everybody. To, in the, uh, Jesus at the Pharisees, you pray out loud. You do all stuff, so you can draw attention to yourself. You wear your phylacteries down your leg and all this <laughs> kind of stuff. I don't do it for that because I yeah. usually praying. But I'm because I'm pretty much an introvert, right. right? So on the plane, like, because I'm one of those guys, you get into the seat, you put your earplugs in, don't talk to me, don't look at me, let me just yeah, do my thing. thing. But 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 when I'm doing my thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, people notice, and it does draw in some conversation. Or this does draw in some mm-hmm. conversation when I'm rosary. That does draw in right. conversation, and so I'm not afraid to engage because I see it as an opportunity to be able to to break down a, yet another barrier. Right. Um, to to clear up another misconception mm-hmm. about what the the Catholic faith is, so I see those as nice. opportunities. I don't now, I'm just being honest. I mean, I don't seek out those. I don't say, "Hey, let's talk about Jesus." I mean, <laughs> you know. But if the but if wearing something brings yeah. creates right. an opportunity, then I'm, then I'm not afraid. It's kind of like engage. what we talked about the other day, where you whip out a Bible or a catechism or something uh, mm-hmm. while you're sitting on a flight. You're gonna get asked about. It. Yeah, yeah, I've literally, yeah. and there are times that I'm not actually gonna be reading because I'm like hoping to doze off or something. Right. But I'll still open that Bible up on my lap or something on a flight because I know that it's likely gonna open up a door for conversation to minister to someone's soul, and it has never not worked. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and I am a big, I'm a big believer and a big fan of blessing your workspace, um, and so I keep holy water and holy salt in my office Mm. which is a big open concept office and when um nobody is there i get if i get there earlier or whatever at least probably once every week or two i go around i bless all the doors who all bless all who enter and all who leave and i say the our father and the hail mary and i bless all the church the, the computers and the desks and the chairs and everything to keep the space you know as holy as it can be because it's a very secular office i mean you know we do real estate and you know most of the people in my office i'm thinking all of the people in my office are not church going they're yeah. just me but they stare at the late our lady of fatima all day because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she's on display up high in the corner mm-hmm. um but i'm blessed that i do that and then sometimes if it's three o'clock i'm in the office i have my youtube channel on and i they listen to divine mercy with me because, see, they're not offended. I don't blare it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have right. it on very small, like, you know, a couple of times somebody have asked a question, you know, or whatever. Um, but they don't, you know, I'm blessed to be able to be in a work environment like that because um, I'm in real estate where they don't oppose me doing it. But I don't ever force it on them either. Right. I mean, I, you know, I have my space and I respect their space. Um, and, and they know that I pray and it's funny over time now, I can't tell you how many of them have come to me and said, Hey, would you pray for me? Or, you know, somebody's sick, would you pray for them? Because they know that I genuinely will pray. And that's, you know, to me, that's like the gift of being visible with my faith Yeah, is that people recognize that I actually believe and they know that I'll pray for them. Yeah. And they'll mm-hmm. ask you to pray for them. I mean, you know, I think that's probably one of the greatest honors as as Christians that we have 
is being available, you know, and visibly present in our in our Christianity so that people feel comfortable to do that, that you, you know, that they would trust you enough to pray for something that is terribly important for them. Well, that is the greatest thing we have to offer, right? It's amazing. Wasn't it, uh, was it St. Peter in the, in the Acts of the Apostles that he was asked for something? He's like, I, I don't have money to give you. Oh, but was what it I do get, yes, yeah, Acts of the Apostles. But what I can give you is, uh, how did he, what did he yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. Um, money I cannot give you, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Get up and walk. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. what? Dang, I was asking for a few bucks yeah. and now I can walk. I mean, so what's that? Because Jesus will give you more than you can imagine. When you, The more deep yeah. you open yourself to him, mm -hmm. the more he'll give you. Because the more you empty yourself of those things that separate you from his love, the more he yeah. can fill you. And, that, and that's, yeah. that's something that to be an intercessor for someone, to, to, to pray for someone, there's a sense in which there's like a learned skill there. Um, where if we are not actively uh, engaging in a, in, a, in a prayer life, like if it's just us behind closed doors and we're, and, and we're, if we are not behind closed doors talking to God, like consistently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we should not be trying to pray for other people. Like we, we that has to be, uh, there has to be a pre-existing relationship there <laughs> uh, between you and God for that yeah. interaction, you know, but that having been said, we should all be talking to God behind closed doors, we should all be talking to God consistently. And thusly, we should also all be able to pray for people. doesn't mean we're all going to cure paralysis or something, but... But we never know what your prayers you are going to do. Yeah. And, and intercessory prayer, I mean, I think a lot of people have a misconception about, you know, Catholicity and the fact that we ask a saint to intercede for us. You know, like, you know, I pray to St. Michael all the time because, you know, he's tired. He's really tired trying to take care of everybody. But, you know, I, I'll pray to, you know, St. Mary Magdalene or, you know, and people are like, what do you mean you're praying to, a, you know, somebody who's dead? You know what I mean? I mean, they don't understand. And I'm like, no, I'm just asking for their intercession because by all chances, they're probably up in heaven with God. And do you think that if St. Mary Magdalene went up to Jesus and say, hey, you know, there's a there's a lady down there and she's really got something, you know, could we give her a little grace? How do we know that it doesn't work that way? Mm -hmm. We can't say that it does, and we can't say that it doesn't. But who are we to say? And, and the saints have interceded. I mean, there's been beautiful miracles that have been performed. I mean, in order for a saint, I don't even think people understand what it requires to be a saint. There has to be miracles, like two, right? At least two miracles. Yeah, this, we should do a whole you. episode just on the saints. And we will. Yeah. We'll do yeah. a saint. Yeah. That's a teaser. We'll be back. Um, but, you know, it's just... Praying for intercessory prayer is important, but yeah. you know, being able to pray for others is a blessing. So, something I shared with you guys yesterday is that, uh, or in previous episodes, uh, is that you know, at a restaurant, I will ask the waiter or waitress, mm -hmm. "Is there anything in your life I can pray for?" And again, yeah. I'm not putting them on the spot, and in, like, so I actually picked up this habit from someone who would invite waiters and waitresses to pray with the family at the table. Oh wow! And you know, I with where I'm at now, I don't feel like that's fair to them. But what I will do is make it very clear. We're praying people. I'm a praying person right. and we're going to, I want to offer you up to the King. Like, is there anything in your life I can pray for? And then when they're gone doing their job, I will legitimately do that. And, right. and I make sure to try to do that no matter who I'm with yeah. for lunch, even if I'm going to be praying privately to myself right. and cause I'm with someone that may not be someone of prayer, I will still ask that question. Um, and uh, as a side note, Ethan, our producer, texted me. He says the book, uh, The Jewish Roots of the Eucharist, we were trying to remember the author. It's Brant Petrie. Nice. No, not Brant. I thought that was the guy I was thinking of. The guy I think it was a Jewish. He was Sean, Jewish okay. and, be, and became... Well, the Catholic. book—the book that's literally tiled. Oh, the picture, yeah. Brent the Jewish Petrie. roots of the youth. That's, a, a, that's talk, a fantastic a book. About it too. Is it also Roy? by Brent no, Petrie. It's not Roy. The talk is also yeah, by Brent yeah. Petrie. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Roy Shulman. That's that's Ray the guy. Was, Roy Shulman. That's the guy that, I was thinking that, of. Roy Shulman. He was is a Jewish one. convert. He's a Jewish convert who talks about the Jewishness of the Catholic faith. He was a Harvard professor. I believe uh, it was a Harvard sure. professor yeah. or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Roy Shulman. We can put that yeah. one up too. Mm -hmm. But Brad Petrie's the bomb, man. Van that Petrie. dude. Man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, because yeah. he goes into the uh the Mishnah, the Talmud, 
So uh, many things. The, yeah, the yeah. yeah it really goes, worth the your Eucharist time. goes so deep in yeah. Judaism. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's behind the veil, right? Rash, uh, that is, is uh, unbelievable. Yeah. We'll do an episode. We're gonna on do it. an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Stay <laughs> with us. It's gonna be all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, and hopefully someday we'll be able to like take questions from y'all. So that would be good. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a question show one time where yeah, people can write in, yeah, in, writing questions, and then we'll about, just yeah. do an episode when we film again, and we'll literally just answer all your questions. Yeah. So that would be really fun. All right, we're going to go. We're going to, this is good. We're going to come and we'll see you again soon. And Deacon will take us out. Yeah, don't, and don't forget to uh, to follow us on our website, prodigallife.com, and also patronize us as well. And we cannot wait to see you again. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care, my friends. Until next time, may God bless you abundantly.